Labster is an innovative platform designed to revolutionize science education through virtual laboratories. It offers a suite of interactive lab simulations that allow students to conduct experiments and learn scientific concepts in a safe, cost-effective and engaging virtual environment. Developed by real scientists, Labster simulations are based on mathematical algorithms that support open-ended investigations, making it a valuable educational tool for students and educators alike. With Labster, learners can experience the practical applications of science, enhance their understanding, and prepare for real-world laboratory work one. Today, you will learn everything you need to know to survive your first day in the lab. Are you ready for the challenge? This simulation uses voiceovers. If you don't have audio, click the speaker symbol on the top left of your lab pad to switch to play mode. If you disable the sound effects, the lab pad will slide up whenever there are instructions to read. You can select what type of audio you prefer, such as music, sound effects, and voice. Deselecting any of the options will mute that option. Click continue to learn how to navigate through your mission. Using the lab pad is an important way to get the most out of the simulation. Is this the first time you've played a lab simulation? Option A. Yes, please walk me through the lab pad features. Option B. No, it isn't. I already know how it works, thanks. This is your lab pad. Use the lab pad at any time to access relevant theory about the lab or additional instructions on what to do next. You can slide down the lab pad by clicking anywhere on the background. Try it out. Well done. When your lab pad is lowered, you can listen to me without having to click continue. Whenever there is an image or question on the lab pad, it will be raised automatically. These arrows will show up if you need to interact with an object that is out of view. You can click the arrow to rotate the camera toward the object or just rotate it by clicking and dragging your cursor to the side. Try rotating the camera by clicking and dragging your cursor to the side of the screen, then click on the corner of your lab pad to raise it. The lab pad will guide you through the virtual lab and store all the information you collect while playing. Click continue to proceed. Make sure you read the information in this white text box carefully. You won't be able to access it anymore after you click continue. You can access all relevant information in the four tabs above. Right now you're in the Home tab. Click on the Theory tab to learn about the four lab pad tabs. Use your mouse wheel or drag the gray bar on the right side of the lab pad to scroll down. Scroll down now and click on the option on the bottom of the page. Option A. Click here to confirm that you know how to scroll down. If you ever get stuck somewhere, you can click me for help. During the simulation, I will ask you multiple choice questions with four options. Only one is correct. Let's try it out. What is my name? Click on the theory tab to find out. Option A. Dronald. Well done. That is the correct answer. When you answer a quiz question correctly, your score will increase. You will get 10 points if you answer the question correctly on the first try. For every additional attempt, two points will be subtracted from your score. This question is not scored. That's why the score on the top right of your lab pad is still zero. The lab pad can also show you images relevant to the simulation. After being shown, they will be unlocked and available in the Media tab. Click the View Image button to have a look at the hazardous symbols that you may encounter in this lab. You can track your progress in the Mission tab. Go to the Mission tab if you want to get an overview of your work or load from a checkpoint. You can also see your progress and the virtual lab time on the top right of the lab pad. Every time you begin a lab, the clock on the lab pad will read 8 a.m. Good job! Now you know how to use the functions of the lab pad. It's time to get hands-on. You can interact with the objects in this lab by clicking on them once. If you hover over an object, you will see a tooltip pop up. In case an object is out of view, you will see arrows on the side of your field of view. Just turn around to find the object. Are you ready to start your mission? Option A, yes, let's get started. Option B, no, I would like to get to know you first. Perfect. Then let's get started with your first mission. First, find a lab coat. Turn to your left and click on it to put it on. Click and hold the left mouse button and find a glove box and click on it. 
Click and hold the left mouse button and move the cursor to the side to rotate the camera. Now pick up the safety goggles and you are ready to go. Click on the doors, enter the laboratory. This lab was used by first year chemistry students and they obviously didn't leave it in the safest condition. Have a look around and identify the different hazards. Find 5 safety hazards and click on them. For sure, chemicals need to be stored in designated cupboards and not just placed on the floor. This is especially important for reactive chemicals. Flammable liquids need to be stored. One hazard down, four more to go. Identify the hazards by clicking on them. That's it. This bench looks very messy. It is important to keep the lab bench tidy. Any clutter should be cleared away before starting a new experiment and there should be no hazardous chemicals left on the workbench. There are three more hazards. Can you find them? Click and hold the left mouse button and move the cursor to the side to rotate the camera. Well spotted. Every lab has two emergency exits which ensure that nobody gets cornered in the event of a fire. The emergency door isn't any good if it is blocked by objects. Click on the handcart to move it to a safe location. Well done! The emergency exits have to always be cleared. There are two more hazards. Can you find them? The fume hood constantly draws air through a filter to ensure that you don't get in contact with dangerous chemicals. The airflow only works effectively if the glass sash is pulled down. Let's close this fume hood. What a relief! Now the air is safe to breathe. There is one more hazard. Click on it. A sink full of dirty glassware isn't a nice surprise. Make sure you always clean, dry and put away the equipment after every experiment. Let's remove the glassware. Beautiful, clean and tidy. Time to take care of the hazardous chemicals on boxes. Click on them to have a closer look. Click on the lab pad for more information. Click on the bottle containing flammable liquid. Click the view image button to learn more about the hazard symbols. Well done. The red diamonds on the bottles are called hazard symbols. Each of them depicts a different hazard. Have a look at the following overview of the different hazard symbols. You can click the view image button to get more information about the displayed image. At which symbol depicts an oxidizing reagent? Click the view image button to get more information about the image. Precisely, oxidizing regions are very dangerous because they can accelerate chemical reactions such as fires by providing electronegative atoms. What does the following symbol mean? Click the view image button to get more information about the image. You got it. There are many kinds of health hazards. Substances with this symbol can cause respiratory problems, induce mutations in cancer, or may be toxic to specific organs. Here is an image of the hazard symbol on the box. What does it mean? Click the view image button to get more information about the image. Well done. These chemicals definitely don't belong here. Imagine if somebody walks into the pile and the glass bottles fall onto the floor. If they break, they could light a fire, and the explosives next to them would certainly produce a bombastic news story. 
click on the bottles to remove them. Let's get rid of this safety hazard. Click on the cluttered workbench to tidy it up. Oh dear, this workbench is a real mess. Hopefully you will never see something like this in a real lab. Let's take care of the problems one by one. Start with turning off the Bunsen burner. It is very dangerous to keep an open flame unattended. Turn off the Bunsen burner flame. Great. Now click on an object that you should never bring into the lab. Exactly. Personal equipment is not supposed to be placed on workbench surfaces. Could you imagine what would happen if this backpack caught fire? There is a living organism on this bench. Can you find it? Oh, have a look at this. There is a bacteria colony growing on this agar plate. This might be some dangerous pathogen. We need to use a special bin for biological waste. Discard the Petri dish with the unknown bacterial sample in the bin. There is still a protocol from a previous experiment on the table. Clean up the lab protocol. Oops, you just spilled a hazardous chemical. Have a look at the hazard symbol on the beaker. What does the hazard symbol on the beaker mean? Click the view image button to get more information about the image. Option A, toxic. Option B, flammable. Option C, corrosive. Option D, explosive. Good guess, but not correct. The toxic symbol would be represented. What does the hazard symbol on the beaker mean? Click the view image button to get more info. Brilliant. This is a corrosive chemical. We are dealing with either an acid or a base. You can use a pH indicator to figure out what it is. You only need a tiny drop of the indicator. You can use a micro pipe bed for this. Pick up the pipette from its holder. Now pick up a pipette tip from the box. Drop a drop of the indicator liquid. Now add a drop to the spill to identify if it's an acid or a base. Fantastic! When you added the indicator liquid to the spill, the drop turned red. This means the spilled chemical must be a strong acid. We need to neutralize it before cleaning it up. Strong acids react with your skin can cause burns. That's why it's very important to protect your hands with gloves. First, discard the tip in the trash bin and put the pipette back on its holder. Spills of strong acids or bases have to be neutralized before you can dispose of them. Sodium bicarbonate is the chemical term for baking soda. It neutralizes the acid and the remains can be scooped into a plastic bin and discarded. Let's neutralize this acid spill. Pick up the baking soda. Put baking soda on the spilled solution. Well done! Now put the neutralizer back on the shelf. Now it is safe to use absorbent paper to clean up the spill. 
The neutralized acid can be disposed of in the solid chemical waste. Usually the chemical waste is stored in a fume hood. During the cleanup, your gloves got contaminated. You need to dispose of them to avoid spreading chemicals over everything you touch. Click on the trash bin to discard your contaminated gloves. Why didn't you just clean the spill with water? Option A, it would pollute the water. Option B, it could ignite. Option C, the acid reacts with water. Option D, the acid freezes the water. Superb! If you drop water into strong acid, they react and produce a lot of heat. The reaction could potentially lead to splashes of acid. A drop of a corrosive chemical in your eye could cause serious damage and lead to blindness. That's why it's essential to wear safety goggles all the time. Now just because this is a virtual lab, let's do something crazy and simulate a situation in which you don't wear any safety goggles. Don't try this at home. Put the goggles on the bench. Pour the beaker containing the unknown acid solution into the bottle with the unknown toxic liquid. Like I said, don't ever try this at home. Click on the lab pad for more information. What should you not do if a person's clothes suddenly catch fire? You got it. The most effective way to extinguish? What would you use if there was an open fire in the lab? Precisely. There are usually two different types of fire extinguishers. Carbon dioxide based extinguishers and foam based extinguishers. Never use a carbon dioxide extinguisher.